Imagine you're browsing YouTube, and you come across a game called Toho Luna Nights. And you go into it blindly, you've never heard of this franchise before, and you think, oh, this is a game that's a Metroidvania, and this is referencing the creators of this game's characters. So you think nothing of it. And that's your first mistake. What you don't realize is that Toho Luna Nights is in fact a fan game created and derived from Toho Project by Team ha Shanghai Alice or Junya Ota slash Zune. Now, Zune is very, very lackadaisical when it comes to his copyrights. As long as you, you know, don't steal the characters and don't credit it as your own, you can pretty much do anything. You could say, hmm, what do I want to do today? Well, I want to make a Tetris game, but I want it to be based around Toho characters. You can do that. And so someone might wander along and find this Tetris game and think it's an original creation by you. They may not look into it any further than that. And you're like, hmm, but it's not my creation, but they'll think it is. And that, my friends, is the phenomena that is the most popular unpopular series in the world. Toho permeates everything on the internet and pop culture. Even if you have never heard of Gensokyo, you've probably come across the characters in Toho before. What about Bad Apple? Have you seen that? That is from Toho. It is Ellie's stage theme from Toho 4, Lotus Line Story. What about Cyrano's Perfect Mask Class? That is indeed a Toho fan song by Iosis. Now, what else has Toho influenced that you may not know? Well, if you know Undertale by Toby Fox, it's one of the biggest indie games ever. And what a lot of Undertale fans surprisingly don't know is that, well, the thing is, it's heavily influenced by Toho. Toby Fox is a massive Toho fan. He has cited Zune as one of his biggest inspiration when it comes to both gameplay and music. He grew up making Toho piano covers. That's how he learned how to play music. And I know Earth Pound and Homestuck and Mother, they were big influence as well, that's obvious. But if you look at the general plot of Undertale, a human goes to the underground, has to resolve an incident, that is a whole plot reference to Toho 11 Subterranean Animism. That is the plot of the game. There's even a spider monster. We don't have a talking flower because unfortunately Yuka could not make it. But that is a love letter to Toho. And some of the boss battles are references, like Asriel. He has star magic, which is a reference to Marissa Kurosame. And Sans, the bullet health feel of that is a, an homage to Toho. It's if you're a Toho fan, you can see these references. If you're not, you're blind to them. And that's kind of sad because Toho has influenced so much of the pop culture out there. A lot of the VTubers out there, Marine from Hololive, she's a huge Toho fan, but it goes over a lot of people's heads. She'll make a reference and they don't know what she's talking about. And she could she could have a music video by EOCs of all people. Goes right over the head. Hell! Lolly God Requiem was produced by Eosis, which is a Toho Dojin circle for music. Toho is everywhere. It has its hands in everything. The anime Yumi Kui Mary was made by a, uh, guess what, Toho fan who previously did, if I'm correct, Advent Cyrano. And Pop Team Epic was made by B Bikub, who started out, guess what? as a Toho fan artist. And Waffy, who does the chibi art for Hololive, he made Waffle's project, which is, you guessed it, a Toho fan project where you can make the deformed chibi characters. <clears throat> Toho has such an influential effect on everything out there, yet so many people are only have a passing familiarity with it or they don't know what it is. And that's kind of sad because it's a phenomenal series, and yes, it runs on fan in from games to music to fan anime and 
even an entire fan convention, Rei Teisai, which is entirely based around Toho. And yet, despite the passion, despite the unending dedication of the fans and the amazing content they can create when they put their mind to it, no one, no one really knows it. If you type in, for example, if you type in Toho Reaction, you know how reaction content is huge on YouTube. If you type in Toho Reaction, <coughs> you hardly get anything. You you get a few, and there's starting to be more. That's true. It's starting to have a bit of resurgence in the mainstream, but overall, there's there's not much. It's it's kind of sad. You'll get a few reactions here and there, t some to memories of Phantasm. Nanda Muso Kakyo, which I would argue is the superior fan anime. Um, some to old fan a animations and all that. But it's just, as a Toho fan, and I, I've been a Toho fan for a very, very long time. A lot of the Toho fans are my age because we just grew up. There's not a lot of new Toho fans. They're mostly old. Yeah, we're, we're almost as old as the series itself, which, if people don't know, came out in the 90s. That's why there's a whole series called PC-98, because that took place before Windows was even a thing. Um, well, it, it was like an offshoot of an early Windows, I guess, but it was very early on, and the technology wasn't as what it is today. Now, one thing I want to go into is... Why it's both great and bad that Toho doesn't get the appreciation it deserves. Yes, a lot of people know. It. Yes, it has the most fan art on Donburu by far, to the point where Donburu was jokingly referred to as the Toho Burrow because there's so much fan art. And there's a lot of fans, a lot of channels. Actually, not a lot of channels. I'm like feeling a niche right now because besides a few. Uh, like Asprey FM and another one, and a few other ones. There's not many people covering Toho content, at least in a discussion kind of way, where you, they just ramble on about lore and the impact Toho has on the world around it. All in all, it's it's good and it's bad because it's good because we are all together, we all passionate about the same thing, we can talk about it. There's not, I, I, there's not uh, the dreaded word Nomi's to bother us because it's just us and us being passionate over a great series. On the other side of the coin, though, it can get stagnant because there's not much fresh blood. There's not many people discovering Toho. For example, my subscriber base, they came here because they already knew what Toho was. You guys know Toho. You're like, that is indeed a Toho character. I'm going to follow this person because he likes what I like. So, in that regard, it's kind of like, well, unfortunate, because no one new is getting it. But that's part of the reason why I'm doing videos like this. I want to introduce people to Toho. A lot of people do have a vague understanding of it, but they don't take that dive. Because, here, here's the thing, I'm not going to shame you if you've never played a mainstream Toho game. If you don't want to play a bullet hell, that's fine, there's side games like the fighting games. That you can get into and it would be just as fine. Or you could enjoy mere, mostly fan content. Because there are so many fan interpretations that it's not funny. And you that's the fun part. You get to decide how you see a character. Someone may be like, that doesn't match canon, but that's fine. Do you know how many times a fan has decided, mm, Zune, I disagree with your notion here. Like, a lot of people like Suika's orange hair. And in the latest game, she had blonde hair. And they were like, I opt to ignore that decision. The same with... Um, Momiji and Aya hating each other. They're like, no, 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 no. They're best friends. So you can make your own interpretation, and that's fine. As long as it's not, like, wildly wrong. But even then, no one can call you on it, because the series run on, runs on fan and You get to embrace your own headcat and just have fun. So overall, if you just want to get into the characters, you like the music, you like the game, fan games and whatever... More power to you. I'm not going to force you to play some bullet hells. Because I only played one myself. And it was not fun. I did not like bullet hells. But I love Toho. I love what it stands for. I love Gensokyo. I love the lore. And you can be a fan like that. It doesn't make you any lesser. Sure there are some gatekeeping fans who are like. You gotta play the games or else you're not a real fan. Don't pay any mind to them. Okay. 
those aren't real fans because they're trying to drive people away from the amazingness that is Toho. I, on the hand, welcome you. I welcome you to Toho Project and all that it stands for. Now, another thing to keep in mind about Toho Project is that it's huge. The fan fandom and the fan in and all the content is huge. It can be a bit overwhelming. You type in Raymu Hakure on an image world, you got like 30,000 results and you're like, what? And that's just one character. That might have been a higher or lower number. I don't know. I haven't looked in a while, but overall, it can be a bit overwhelming. And you type in Toho Music Remixes and there's like gajillions. So much that that is why I upload underrated remix because there's a lot that slipped through the radar like 14 years ago that are by circles that may not may or may not even exist anymore and I want to share them with the world and that's just how much content there is and it's amazing it's beautiful and it's why Toho is one of the most majestic fandoms out there and why I love for you all to give it a chance to become part of the most popular unpopular series ever and I know there are people who would argue well, you know, Undertale and, like, Ruby and... Uh, what's what's another good good example um, of a series? Xenoblade or whatever. Um, Genshin. Genshin's a good comparison to Toho. Where uh, a lot of fan content, a lot of good fan content. And it does, it does have a lot of great fan content. But they're limited. They're very limited because Hoyoverse is not like Zune. You can't just make a video game about Genshin and be like... That's my game, but they belong to Hoeyverse. No, you'll get sued. You can do that with Toho, which is why it's so phenomenal. Now, overall, I'm going to end this video with one thing and one thing only. If it ever seems, seems daunting to you, if Toho seems overwhelming and you don't know where to begin, allow me to recommend Toho Muso Kakyo, A Summer Daydream. It's a great fan anime to start with. It's pretty chill. I don't think it's finished. I don't think they ever finished it. They might have. It's been a few years since I've checked in on it. But if you want to be easily introduced to the characters and the general setting, go for that. Memories of Phantasm is, is way better animated. And I recommend that second. You can check that out. But they take a lot of liberties. And that, again, that's nothing wrong. They can do whatever they want. But uh, it's kind of broad strokes. I'm, Muso Kaku is an original story, so it's a great way to get used to the characters in an original setting without having to know the extended context. Because Memories of Phantasm, they'll be like, okay, we're just going to do broad strokes of the games, the game plot. And if you don't know the plot, it's just going to go right over your head. You might enjoy the animation and the fan voice actors and whatever, which is usually done only by one girl. Props to them, by the way. But... Musukagi is best because it's just, it's standalone and you won't be overwhelmed by content, like context that you don't have. And Memories of Phantasm also gets a lot of flax because it makes all the, it makes half the cast boobalicious, which I don't mind if you see in my channel. But I digress, it's a whole different thing that some people don't like and, well, they're wrong. Uh, now, if you want a game to start with, a good game to start with is probably. Hopeless Masquerade. It's a good beginner type game, but if you want like the refined version of that gameplay, I would recommend Antinomany of Common Flowers. Uh, again, each Toho game is pretty standalone. You just need to know the characters. So if you research the characters a little bit and then jump right into one of these fighting games, it's fine. Or you could do a fan game like Luna Knights, like I said. That is so standalone that people can think, oh, this has no connection to a bigger universe at large if they don't do any research. So it's a good jumping on point if you want to just enjoy the atmosphere that is Gensokyo and Toho. Overall, I hope you give Toho a chance, and I hope this sheds some light on how influential Toho is. And here's something you might know, not know. Uh, Toby Fox and Zune are doing a collaboration for the fan game Toho Danmaku Kagura, I believe it is. It's going to come out next year. They're going to do a collab of music. So if you like both of them or you like one of them, check it out. The song's going to be an absolute banger. In any case, thank you, Fairy Mates, for watching, and thank you for anyone new who stopped by. Be sure to let me know down below what you want to see next.